one. <laughs> Here we are. And we are back for another episode of Chewing Clock. That's us. That, that isn't, is it this one that turns me up and down? Try it. I'm not sure. Check, 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 check. Check. No. no it's, it's just the one closest one? to you. Check. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's that one. Okay. All right. Cool. Technology, folks. Yeah, I got to learn that. So now I can turn myself up and down so I'm not yelling in my own ear. That's a plus. So, we're going to dive straight into the Super Bowl and Kyle Shanahan blowing another fourth quarter lead. How? 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 Six minutes. How? He has been outscored, I think it's 48 to nothing in his two Super Bowls now in the fourth quarter and overtime. And uh, what was it? The Patriots started, was it eight minutes? Yep. Yep. S- if you're going to score on Kyle Shanahan, you're going to score quick in the fourth quarter and overtime. That's it. Forget the first three quarters. You just need to be within a, a rock's throw, 25 points to beat Kyle Shanahan's defense in the fourth quarter with nine minutes to go. 25 points. That's it. That's it. In, I don't want to... Uh... The Atlanta Falcons defense did, back then, did suck. But they were not put in a good position because of Shanahan's offense, who played, okay, let's stop scoring. Let's just play keep away. And uh, you saw what happened then. And um, it wasn't ex- Shanahan's offense this time wasn't exactly a keep away type thing. It was a very conservative work off the play action type of thing you didn't really put the ball in Jimmy Garoppolo's hands to uh, win the game Um, another touchdown maybe would have uh, put a nail in the coffin maybe was it just me or did Kyle Shanahan not trust Jimmy Garoppolo I think you're right I think you're right it's not every day somebody tells me I'm right (laughs) no it, it, it seemed that it just wasn't it's not a very sophisticated offense. It kind of just runs off, you know, play action, um, dump into the, the backs. Uh, Samuel had an awesome game. He's going to be a man child. Um, he made, Jimmy made some okay throws. Um, he had a lot of deflections, you know. They say that about the quarterbacks that aren't like, super tall. He had some deflections couple of bad decisions, but what do I always said about this guy? Holds the ball too long. That was very evident evident in the fourth quarter. Yeah. It was the detriment to their drives. Throw it away. Throw it away. Throw it away. Throw it away. And he takes the sack. Yeah. And he hasn't learned. I mean, if you played in a game and you didn't get rid of the ball and someone tackled you and your shoulder broke in six pieces, you'd get the picture. you figure Wouldn't it you? out. Yeah. Yeah. No. So Jimmy Garoppolo in that fourth quarter even had the perfect opportunity to show exactly what the Patriots missed out on when they traded him. He had the perfect opportunity to pull a Tom Brady, to pull an Aaron Rodgers in any game that is not – not an important game, mind you, because Aaron Rodgers can't win that important game. But Jimmy Garoppolo had the perfect opportunity to show that he is the real deal, a real quarterback in this league, in a real force to be reckoned with. And you know what he did? He held the ball for too long and ended up throwing it away too late. And it killed their drive. His Best pass of the game might have been his last pass of the game. Which still ended up being an interception. But it was a great pass. That entire play on both sides of the ball was just beautiful. Everything about it. You're right. Because he had great protection, beautiful pocket, nice throw. He threw it in four. He was being guarded by it was zone, but he he had four guys in that vicinity. He threaded the needle perfectly. there. It was just a great play by a defender. And it would have taken maybe Randy Moss be the only friend that would have taken that down, maybe. 
I, th- I feel like DK Metcalf probably would have taken that down too. Big dude like that. Yeah, somebody big and strong would have taken that down. That but Kyle Fuller best. just came in and destroyed it. That was his best pass of the game, and it was yep. his last pass of the game. It, it was a phenomenal over. pass. I'm so happy that he got one of those. I just, I'm not. He's not going to be as good as everybody thinks under yeah. any circumstance. Especially if he's not allowed to feel it out and work his way through it. If he, he is now, he is being coached, overcoached, and he's not, he doesn't have any uh, um, freedom to do anything. It's, and maybe they're afraid to give it to him, but how are you going to, how are you going to know if he's the guy, if you're not going to give him the freedom? I mean, he's, he's got two more years on his contract, right? Two ooh, more years or three more ooh, years? Ooh, ooh, or does he? Tangent. So, if the 49ers were to cut Jimmy Garoppolo before free agency begins, they only eat a $4 million cap dead money hit. Which means they could go out and sign Tom Brady. Saw that. I doubt they do. If they're going to do anything, they're going to go after Dak Prescott. Hands down, he is going... I know a lot of people won't agree with me, and most big-time analysts don't agree with me, but Dak Prescott is the best quarterback on the market right now. He is the youngest, he has the most upside, and you can build a team around him. He is the best free agent quarterback on the market. Not Drew Brees, not Tom Brady. It is Dak Prescott. No, those two guys, you can't build anything around No, No, neither one of them will be around in three years. No. Like I said before we started this show, I'll always find a reason to yell. And to crap all over Aaron Rodgers. Yes. <laughs> Two <laughs> things I will find in every episode. I'm going to talk about something later in the game that's going to ultimately have him bashing Lamar Jackson. Watch. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I think as far as upside, young upside, and um, put in the right place, I mean – I don't know what better. You had a good running back, good receivers. Who are we talking he's about? Prescott. He should okay. have been better, but he had a shitty coach, a shitty owner as far as meddling. I mean, if, you, if you're running an organization, you want Jerry Jones to run it for you. But if you're trying to win football games and personnel decisions, that's not what you want. Dak Prescott, is he going to go to Shanahan? And is Shanahan going to – Hold him back like Garoppolo? We we don't know who the issue is. Is it that Shanahan doesn't trust a quarterback because he's an offensive guru? Or is it that Shanahan specifically doesn't trust Garoppolo? Because I don't remember him being... I remember Matt Ryan pretty much doing whatever Matt Ryan wanted to do. Correct. So I'm going to think it's because he just doesn't think Garoppolo's the guy. But... It's not his call. It's or it's uh, John Lynch's call. Yep. And does he admit already that this has failed? Is this Garoppolo's first full season not yes. being injured? Yes. He might hide behind that. Lynch will probably hide behind that. It's very unlikely that the 49ers move on from Jimmy Garoppolo. It is definitely a possibility. But unless they're going to make a move for Dak Prescott, who wants way too much money. That'd be so ballsy. Uh, Dak Prescott reportedly has turned down $33 million a year because he wants more. And it's very likely that the Cowboys are going to franchise tag him. However, another interesting scenario the with all this quarterback movement. Think about it for a second. And I know Colin Cowherd has been destroying this moment or this, this talk. Think about... Tom Brady to the Cowboys and Dak Prescott to the Patriots. In a trade? Well, a it wouldn't be trade? a trade. It would so well. It would have to be a sign and trade if they do franchise tag him. But mm. you, they're going to know if Brady's coming in before they actually the franchise tag has to be hit first. So here's something that I saw today that I never thought of before, and I it was last night. Phil Perry on uh, the early edition, I think it was. And I never thought of this before. Tom Brady is not going to go to a team where a coach or an atmosphere where everybody can do whatever the hell they want. Correct. That's why, and I never thought of this till last night, 
I didn't know what side of the fence I was on. Tom Brady needs Bill Belichick more than Bill Belichick needs Tom Brady because if Tom Brady goes to a team that doesn't have the discipline that a Belichick-style team has, where guys are coming in when they don't have to, coming in early, leaving late, doing extra work with passing, he wants nothing to do with a team that a bunch of clowns showing up when they want with their TikToks and their Snapchats and their face snaps. Tom Brady needs the Patriot way. It's that simple. That's, I guess that's what I was trying to get to. <laughs> he needs something very similar to that. Gruden doesn't have that. God, no. That's never been, that's never been on the Cowboys, ever. I mean, I think, for, I think in the 70s and 80s, the Colombian Coke route went directly through Texas Stadium to the rest of the United States. Um, I don't know which coach does that. There's none with that kind of. I mean, Coughlin's gone. Yep. Who has I, that kind of. I would of say <clears throat> not to the degree of Belichick, but Mike Tomlin, there's no chance he goes to the Steelers. Oh, yeah. However, Mike Tomlin, besides Antonio Brown, keeps that team pretty well put together. Joey Porter. But that was towards the end of their careers when they started yeah. getting a little loopy. Yep. So Mike Tomlin has pretty solid control over that locker room, with the exception of Antonio Brown, who's now failed in three different places. That's an Antonio Brown issue. Hmm. Other yeah. than that? Yeah. I can't think of a place that has that kind Maybe of, Pete uh, Carroll? Maybe, no, but there's no, no way he's, he's going jacked to and pumped. He's jacked and pumped. <laughs> Believe me, I covered the Patriots during the Pete Carroll era. There is, they call it, remember the old? The, the, the Pete Carroll of then is not the Pete Carroll of now. He, there are two different Pete Carrolls. Yeah, but he just, even in, the, in USC, he's, he's, the, he's the buddy. He's not the coach. He's the buddy. He's the but he has control over the locker room. You don't see anybody from Seattle going and getting a DUI. You've seen more stories out of New England with Patrick Chung and his cocaine possession. That was weed. Weed, whatever. Was it weed? I thought it was cocaine. No. I definitely thought it was cocaine. It was, a, it was weed. It was up in uh, his Meredith. house in uh, Meredith, Lake. New Hampshire. Yeah, only about an hour from here, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Wanna party at Patrick's house. <laughs> He's got weed. <laughs> However... When was the last time somebody from Seattle had an issue like that? I don't know. I'm sure it's happened. I mean, probably. But, yeah. yeah. Maybe, Back uh, to the Super Bowl. Yeah, he's not going. He, he's going to find out real soon that the atmosphere, the, the, the atmosphere in the clubhouses of the teams that are interested in him, he's not going to be interested in that bullshit. No way. No way. He's going to want to play with that kind of, those kind of dorks. Oh. This is good stuff. Give him Jake Cam for this. Oh, we get the Jake Cam for this one. Doo, doo. There we go. So, good stuff we got for you involving the Super Bowl and a certain Richard Sherman. So, for those of you that haven't seen the Game Changer Sports Network post that we made about, I want to say a half an hour ago now, Richard Sherman was targeted a total of six times in the Super Bowl. Of those six targets, he gave up six completions, 77 yards, and a touchdown. And that includes a perfect passer rating, which is 158.3. I think Sherman may or may not have forgot how to play football in this game. And if you watch those final two drives that the Chiefs have, he gets burned twice. Sammy Watkins destroyed him. Hmm. And... We were re-watching some of the highlights downstairs before the game because we do hours and hours of show prep. Hours. hours. There's well, so many Russ hours. Russ does. <laughs> <laughs> we don't. But I come in here and yell. <laughs> one thing that was evident to me is that the, uh, the Niners' defense was gassed towards the end of that game. But Sherman played like he was gassed from the get-go. He was getting smoked left and right. And I didn't even realize it until he posted it, and we watched some of the some of the plays. He was in like he was in he's like the neighborhood. He was in the neighborhood of every play. You know, it's like oh my god, he caught it. Oh my god, he ran past me. Oh my god, someone else tackled him. It's as if he, it's as if he wasn't there at all. The yep. game wouldn't have been any different if Sherman 
lined, it lined up and it was invisible, the game would have been and no different. It's like in, in Fenway, when you're playing left field and you don't know how and the ball's hit over your head and it bounces off the wall to the center fielder. The left fielder was absolutely useless. It's like if you weren't even there, that was Richard Simmons in the Super Bowl. Sherman. Richard Simmons. Sherman. Richard Simmons in the Super Bowl would have been better than <laughs> Richard Sherman in the Super Bowl. Oh, that was that was a good tie in. I yep. like it. Save that one. Yeah, you did. That was impressive. Richard Simmons. So do you wanna dive straight into that uh he's, he's more of a hands on <laughs> Do you wanna do you wanna back. dive into that offensive pass interference? Oh yeah. So uh the end of the first half, Niners, This is those pictures. I have uh, Kittle 1, Kittle 2, Viking Saints 1, Viking Saints 2. So let's go with one of the Kittles. It doesn't matter which one. So in the, the you saw, at the end of the first half, Niners, it was a good pass. Great. That was a pretty good damn. Bam, good pass. Niners have a chance to sit on the ball or go for it, try to put a nail in the coffin, or at least put even more pressure on the uh, Chiefs. And more importantly than that, Screw the person in your squares who has 0-0 zero, because zero, they're gonna about to get another 0-0 zero, zero and win the half. So this is the play. This is the Kittle uh, offensive pass interference. This is this picture. Can we go to the next picture? And that picture. And Did go you back just to like the first screenshot picture. these off of YouTube? Is that what happened? No, you? that's how they came because oh. there are no photos. Someone had to do that. Oh. But then posted that and I stole that. Oh. Well, all right. So I don't know if that's illegal, but need, all right. We don't need to credit. We don't need to courtesy that because it's not doesn't exist. Nice. So this is right before they get separation. Go back to the other one. This is right before. Now, PI. I think both guys were grabbing each other. So the way I, I mean, he's got the rule. By my eyes, if you, if the defender is grabbing and you push off, that sh should be okay. Um, the offensive pass interference rule, as per the NFL rule book, a penalty called when an offensive player impedes a defender's ability to play pass defense. This can mean setting an illegal pick where an offensive player intentionally gets in the way of an, uh, another player's defender. Pass interference is also called when an offensive receiver shoves the defender away from him prior to making a play on the ball. The penalty is 10 yards from the previous line of scrimmage and the down is replayed. Offensive pass interference cannot occur behind the line of scrimmage or after the ball has been touched following the throw. So. Okay. Is that rule ever been enforced properly? No. Not a chance. No. So the defender is grabbed, hand jabbing him the whole time. And he does push off. But because of the hand wrestling, in my eyes, that shouldn't be PI. So what you're trying to say, and to sum that up real quick, is it wasn't enough for the ref to make that call in such a big game. Yeah, I mean, th that to me falls in the line of your fixed job. Let's keep it close, see what happens. The fix is in for the because Chiefs. Let's, let's do a little thing. All right, so I'm gra grabbing you like this, and at the last second, you see the ball. Yeah. You know so where it is. See, look at me, I went all across the room. <laughs> I'm grabbing him the whole time, so it should have been PEI on me before the ball even got in the air. We probably should have scripted that better. Yeah. <laughs> the rolly chairs didn't help. <laughs> so that is PI. Now, I don't have an argument about this next one, but my argument is this was called, this wasn't called pass interference, and this is Viking Saints 1 and 2. So. This was in the, what, the division game? Yes. So this was not called. There's this, and then there's the other one. Did I? Yep, we tried. I probably might screw up. Yeah, let me check the folder again. Yeah, I, I've got one over there. Crap. 
But anyway, it was this pretty much the same thing, but a different angle. Um, this was a push. If you saw this game, you know this because yep. this was talked about. This one was a clear push off this to was, get separation. Right, like he, the defender didn't even put his arms up until he was pushed. Yep. This was not called, and this was in the end zone. And this was against a team that had gotten This was screwed. also in overtime. In overtime. This was a, against a team that had gotten screwed so bad that they had to make up a new rule for, and they still screwed it up. So the Kittle one was called P.I. That was not called P.I. The question is, what the hell <laughs> is P- <laughs> What is pass interference? We don't know. Did that work like I planned? It's did, all right. You can crack open a, a nice cold cocaine. Yeah? But did that actually work? Like, I, did I turn off the mic? All you did, did I... is turn off your headset. Ah, oh, man. <laughs> you didn't turn <laughs> off the mic at all. I have control of the mic over here. <laughs> I tried, guys. That's all right. I tried. So, <laughs> pass interference is going to continue. No matter what they do, it's going to continue to be. Who knows? At game by game, play by play, season by season, depending on which idiot ref they have. And don't get me started on NFL refs. Because for a, for a, uh, a sport that makes so much damn money, the refs, every single ref should be full time. And this, when they're not refing in the off season, they should be learning and going to some sort of ref school. Not this thing where, hey, that's uh, that's Chuck Wacky Man, and uh, in the in the off season he's a dentist. No, no, no. I don't want a dentist as my field judge. I want a referee. I want a field judge that does nothing but field judging, nothing but that. The NFL is so much damn money. The refs should be all full time refs only. You want to be a dentist? Go be a damn dentist. You're not, not going to be NFL a referee. Ref. Yep. No, I agree. That's the problem. Remember when we had the the like the the restaurant strike, and then they came back with like some new refs, and there was that the team. replacement refs. But these were like after replacement refs yep. were brought back, and the the refs signed their deal. The very next week, it was a, a field goal kick that hit the back bar and came back over. All right. Yeah. That's in the book. If you're a referee, you learn the book. You know that that is. Not a field goal because it didn't completely go through. One guy goes like this. One guy goes like this, and they're looking at each other. And then the guy that went like this said, okay, this. And the guy that went like this said, oh, okay, this. They had no clue. And they were referees hired by the NFL. It's like the replacement refs never left. It, it, it was so bad, it was like they never left. So Good stuff. Pup, we don't. Pass interference is never going to be fixed. No. It's never going to be fixed. It's just going to be, if the flag is thrown, you're screwed. You're never going to pick it up, hardly ever. And the uh, the stupid new rule with uh, replay is not going to save you. Sorry. So I agree. If you get the flag, you're screwed. So, did you see the season premiere of The Mass Singer? I did not. He likes The Mass Singer. Oh, I love The Mass Singer. All I know is whoever's designing these costumes is taking some very serious hallucinogenic drugs. Lots of mushrooms, so, LSD. Real quick, real quick, real quick. That first group of six that debuted after the Super Bowl okay. has a combined nine Super Bowl appearances. The people in the people in, in the, the people in the costumes. There nine is a combined nine Super Bowls in the first six. Now everybody has already figured out who the tiger is. It's too easy. Chad Ochocinco? No, you uh, clearly haven't watched the show. No, I don't. It's, watch that show. it's gonna be Rob Gronkowski. Oh, okay. One hundred percent, which makes up for five su- or four Super Bowls. These people actually sing. Yeah, their voices, their yeah. own voices. Yes. I think Gronkowski would be pretty easy to figure out. Yeah, it was so obvious, and he hasn't been voted out yet. Two didn't people take have the left mask the show. off, but he immediately took a shirt off, so you know it was Rob. <laughs> That's not it, how that works. The shirt doesn't stay on very long on Rob Gronkowski. That's not how the show works. Okay, excellent. All right, here was my thing about. Let's do it. 
the thing that you're the, I'm going to give you a nice segue into crapping all over Lamar Alexander. I'm all about it. Lamar Alexander. <laughs> Jackson. Lamar Jackson. Lamar Alexander Jackson. is a senator. Right. <laughs> I think you probably watch more impeachment than I watch the damn Super Bowl. Anyway, all right, this goes under my uh, Mahomes notes. See if you disagree. Okay. First half, took too much risks, too many risks. This is Mahomes? Yeah. Yes. Threw some bad p- passes. This is first half. Second half, better, but not great. Dealing with a defense that was gassed and a defense that was – he's good. But I didn't s- – there was still some passes that we saw that yep. weren't very good. Patrick Mahomes wasn't Patrick Mahomes in that game. He was easily defeatable. That was th- what would be so – so frustrating if you're a San Francisco 49er fan because you got Patrick Mahomes didn't show up. You got the game you wanted, and you let it slip through your hands. And Nick Bosa wasn't a factor whatsoever. No, I mean he chased him a lot, but chasing Barely. doesn't. It was chasing doesn't do the job. DeForest Buckner was the one, or Buckner, whoever, the captain of that defense was the one who was all over Mahomes that game. It had nothing to do with Bosa. Bosa couldn't break through. Was he being double teamed? Yes. But still, he's you double team Joey Bosa. He still breaks through. All the Boses, double team them all. So I don't know if there's any more. <laughs> um. So when I talk about taking too much risk, that hit he took on the two yard line or whatever, mm. that was <laughs> stupid. That could have affected him for a couple of years. Yep. If that was not 113 pound. Dimeback, and it was a linebacker. Or if safety. that was Joey Bosa, yeah, or sorry, Nick, Shit. Nick Bosa. <laughs> if it was, if that was Nick Bosa, Bosa making family. that exact same hit, Patrick Mahomes wasn't getting off up. He got hit by a, a, a tiny little man, and he got lucky um, that it was helmet on ball because that's the kind of risk that I didn't think he still took. I thought he was smarter than that. This is the kind of risk that somebody else, Lamar Jackson, takes all the time. And this is what's going to get his head knocked off. Yep. And this is why Shan- Shanahan, not Shanahan, uh, Harbaugh has to rein him in. I don't know. It works so well, except for the <laughs> championship game. <laughs> but you got he's got to get reined in. The divisional game, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. You got. You have to rein him in a little. He, he can't keep taking chances like that. If Mahomes has to be smarter than that, if you're a KC fan, you hope that knocks some sense into him, literally, and he doesn't take chances. He like was that. trying to pull that exact same play from the week before, where he he muscled his way into the end zone. However, that defense wasn't allowing it, Mm-mm. and he made a mistake. But he's lucky it didn't cost him the game. Because right there, he could have came out, and now we're putting in, I don't even know who, is it still Chad Henney as the backup in Kansas City? Yeah, if if the backup has to play in the, the Super quarter, Bowl, has to play the third quarter, and it's three and done the whole time, that game you is have completely to think different. the Niners would score one more time, maybe 10 more points at least, you'd hope. You never know, Shanahan, Mr. Conservative, you don't know. He was happy. He was so happy with 20 to 10. It was like... 20 to 10, here's the playbook. Whoa, we don't need it anymore. He was still win. trying to be way too aggressive with eight minutes to go in the fourth, up 10 points. Hello. If you're up 10 points with eight minutes to go in the fourth, run the ball. That's when you need to run the ball. Always run the ball. Waste clock. Don't blow the game. Not in the third quarter when you want to score more points. Be conservative. You want to be conservative when there's eight minutes left. And if you have a five, six minute drive, the game's over. I need those notes that I threw away. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. I still have <laughs> notes. Good. It was good visual. Don't you yeah. agree? It was yep. good. Yeah. Yep. We're all about appeasing our audience here. Yeah, I haven't worn my glasses once. You might want to. Yeah, I wrote really small at the bottom here. Um, um, well, how, how about something that we, we both called on the dot? Most, most, dirt, oh. most, dirt, 
Mostat. Mostarat. Ma. Most. What's his name? Mostart. Mostart. Whoever his name is. We both said uh, one hit wonder, one and done. Um, he was. Uh, he scored a touchdown that he barely got in, and uh, what a couple, fifty-five yards running, average, yep. average. And his longest one for I think twelve or thirteen. Very average. Not not a you know, had really nothing to do with the game. I was really um, impressed with uh, Dabu Samuel. Debo. He was uh, Debo. Yeah, I got you. Dabu. Is that what Debo. Call Debo. No, sorry, Debo. Call. It's Debo Samuel. Debo. Yep. Really impressed with him. That guy's. That kid's going to be <coughs> really good. Um, you know, and it, he really uh, plays well in that offense. As much as a crapping over Shanahan, that offense. I don't know how much of uh, the play action, backfield um, catching and running he's he did in uh, in college, but that that offense seems to be really good for him. I didn't know anything about Debo Samuel no, until didn't. about week twelve this year. No. So, but uh, I think he played well. I think he's going to be a good weapon for them, especially if they lose Emmanuel Sanders, which they probably will. There's a very good chance they will. So, uh, like you said downstairs. Um, if you're not a Patriots fan and your only reason why you're watching it is for your squares or for your DraftKings Sportsbook, then uh, it was a very, it was a fun game to watch. It was the a fun, fun game to watch for me a couple days later <laughs> because I went to bed. But uh, it was an entertaining game. For, uh, you know, it wasn't the NFL fan base won this game. It was, good. It it was, was a great game. Super Bowl that didn't involve the Patriots, which... Honestly, the NFL needed. The NFL needed a Super Bowl without the Patriots for the first time in, what, three years? Yeah. This is ex- – and it was the passing of the torch, the next big – two out of four big quarterbacks. I mean, you still have Wilson. But I don't see Rodgers or Breeze making another run at it. No. You got Wilson still hiding down there in the NFC. Then you have the real next generation of Jackson, Watson, Mahomes. Right. Yeah, it, w- it was a win for the NFL. They did. Uh, it was a good game to you know if you're not really into football and this is your first time you watched uh, a Super Bowl. Um, it was a very exciting game to watch, back and forth. Um, Who's exciting. watching the first game of football of their every life year? This every Super year, Bowl? there's some some people. This is the first time they're watching it. Um, you know, maybe guys that uh, get a girlfriend and she's all into sports. They never were, and she says, "Let's go to the Super Bowl party," and he watches it. Vice versa, uh, kids that have grown up. Uh, maybe this is the first time they were uh, gone to a Super Bowl party. You know Every what I year, thought of? there are people who have watched the Super Bowl for the first time. You know what I thought of? What do you think? So you know how football, the Super Bowl ratings, comes out right after the su- 99 million, right? Sure, that's what they said. It's yeah, it was 99 million. So you know what I thought of the other day? This is gonna be good. Oh yeah, the NFL says 99 million. But that means there was only 99 million homes that were watching the Super Bowl. So the Super Bowl was on in 99 million different homes. How many people had Super Bowl parties? How many people went to, uh, I don't know, Buffalo Wild Wings? Yeah. How many people went to Chunky's, a local theater, to watch the Super Bowl? See, I don't know how they do the ratings anymore. It the used ratings. To be Nielsen, out, I was out, out of date. Then they had people meters. It's impossible. Well, when you have... You can't predict how many people are sitting on my couch watching TV. Well, the people meters were supposed to fix that. When you are... When you get selected to be a people meter home, you are supposed to enter how many people are watching. But some people just get the people meters and just leave them on the television, leave them connected to the Wi-Fi, or leave them connected to the television uh, cable box... And just never deal with them. And it, all it is is just recording what you're watching and just counting it as one. But the people meters are supposed, you're supposed to go through the process of 
entering how many people are watching, their ages. It's, it was meant to give a lot of information for advertisers and be but a you'd have more, to put one in every home. You have, well, that's the thing. You can't. They put yep. them in select markets and so in random places, and um, they expect people to say what they're going to do in their contracts and enter who's watching, their age, sex, and every everything they watch. That's that was the agreement. But they don't do that. People don't do that. They do it the first couple of times. They get lazy. Uh, the people meter is connected to the television. It's it sees what I'm watching. It's giving the data. It's fine. I don't care. So, like you said, it's got to be at least 25 to 50 percent more people than that. Yeah, got to be. Yeah. No, I agree. There's no way it was only. It, I thought about this last year because the number last year was 98.3 million. And then you think, okay, wait a minute. Last year, I threw a Super Bowl party. Okay. I had 13 people. Mm-hmm. But it only counted as one because one subscription, one view. But there's 13 people there. Yep. Are yeah. you telling me all their, these 13 people had the Super Bowl on in their house just playing? No. no. They're not stupid. They're not crazy. Nope. I, have, I do have crazy friends, but not in that case. Yeah, that's... It's really hard to figure out yep. how to pinpoint it. So, but what happened to the ratings are down. I mean, the, I heard it from somebody who had a, some very important job in Washington. They were. The, 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 uh, the ratings are down and the, uh, the, and, the okay, football no, isn't worth no, as much no, anymore. No. And they are, at the time, they were absolutely correct. It dropped from 111 to 98 million. In four years, and it only bounced back up to ninety nine million. Is that because people are cutting the cord, or is that because somebody took a knee? I doubt it's because somebody took a knee. That's the point I'm trying to. Make. Yeah, no. <clears throat> However, it could be because the Patriots, as a championship team and in the Super Bowl, is stale. People don't want to watch it anymore. It could be because the refing is getting so bad, people don't want to see a blown call. There's any multitude of reasons that this could be for the drop from 111 to 98 million. But with the Patriots not in the Super Bowl, we bounce back an extra million. Right. Because I mean, it's, it's way easier to lose viewership than it is to gain viewership. Everybody knows that. It's more fun to watch these new um, quarterbacks. Because if you're not, like I say, if you're not a Patriots fan, it's still exciting to see Mahomes face Garoppolo. I mean, Patriots fans wanted to see Garoppolo game, whether they were anti-Garoppolo or pro-Garoppolo, they wanted to see this game. Um, I bet the um, the ratings in the Boston market, New England market, were higher this Super Bowl than any other non-Patriots Super Bowl in a long time. Has to be. Um, and with more and more places more and more people cutting the cord, um, watching their, taking their entertainment differently. Um, it's going to be interesting to see the new television contracts and all of the sports and what they're going to uh, look like. Because I thought the salaries in all these sports were going to have to settle a little bit, have to level off, but they haven't at all. What does Dak Prescott want? Uh, forty million to be exact okay. per year. You're telling me when the new I don't know when the, the new uh television contracts are, are supposed to be negotiated. You're telling me the next television ne- television ne- contract is gonna be the same or more? They're gonna give more money? Probably. They're not getting the return now. They probably still will get more money. Look at uh, WWE SmackDown selling the Fox saying, for $2 million. S- the NFL will get it from, who are they going to get it from? Netflix? It's going to be the ABC, Net- the Netflix. NBC. Eh. See, the I, NBCs and Foxes, they're not getting the return anymore like they were. Because people are cutting the cord. They're watching it a different way. I don't know. 
do I think that eventually the NFL has a, a game per week on Netflix, Hulu? I, I think they're already on Hulu. Um, That's a Comcast company anyway. Or so, Hulu? Yeah. But the, the new television, it could be, could be Instagram. Could be Facebook. Twitch. Man, they're still young. They, I don't think they have that kind of money yet. No, Bo, they will, though. It could be Instagram. Instagram is owned by Facebook. Twitter has already done games. Yes. Twitter has already done games. The new contracts that these sports leagues have to negotiate from here on out are going to be very different than what they used to be. And I don't know if they're going to get the return they think they're going to get. So I think the contracts are going to be lesser and lesser. And they're going to get stuck with, we have to really, really depend on our gate receipts. We have to really, really depend. That's why Jerry Jones, when he said, screw you, NFL, I am going to market my team the way I want and instead of have the uh, revenue sharing. It was understood that, all right, Jerry, you can't go out and get a separate deal with Nike to have the rim of your stadium all Nike swooshes. You can't do that and take all the Nike money. We're a revenue-sharing company. And he said, screw you. This is my stadium. I'll do what I want. He's the first person to do that. Yep. Well, they all kind of do that. They're all going to have to depend on that sort of thing in the future because I don't think it's going to be the same. And they're going to have to pay. I mean, look at baseball, how insane the salaries there are. Baseball is the fastest dying sport other than NASCAR. How are they going to pay these guys? I, you're There's going to be 10 line. teams that make money, and the rest are going to be in the red. Those 10 teams are going to be paying for the other 20 teams, though. Yeah. That luxury tax is no joke. That's true. That's luxury tax is a hit. That's why they don't want to pay it. I, I just don't know. The new contracts are going to be very different. I think they're not going to be as big. They're not the – ABCs and CBSs and Foxes aren't getting the re the revenue and the return for what for what they're paying. It's going to be different. Um, it's going to be more digital, and I don't know if they're going to pay as much. That's that's my that's my guess. All right. May not be this next one, but you know, hockey. Who watches hockey? Was it ESPN? And then what? There's a, there's a high, there's FS1. FS1. So yeah. If you know where it is in, in your freaking cable. FS1, I can't believe that's still, they're still <laughs> around. But So, what else do we got? Let me check my notes. I actually legitimately don't think he has anything else. I don't think so. I have one more topic before we wrap this up. Now, I, do you want to talk about the Brady again? No. no. What was it then? No. So, the Jaguars. Did, the you hear, did you hear this? I did not. All right. So, the Jaguars announced that they will now be playing two home games back-to-back -back in London next season. Oh, God. Yep. And I want to bring this up because somebody who is sitting right next to me is completely against London. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Have fun. Back-to-back? Back-to-back. Back -to -back. Two different teams back to back. Wow. Don't be surprised if that second game is not sold has not sold out. All right. When it's when it's once in a while in this when it's off season in soccer, football, as they call it over the over the pond. When it's off season and there's uh, an event, a curiosity element to it, like uh, American football coming. Um, yeah, they'll bang out Wembley Stadium, wherever the hell they're playing. Um, but back to back, and it's the frickin' Jaguars. You gotta be kidding me! If you want to kill any interest in a possibility of someday putting a team overseas, send them the Jaguars. What are they, what are they playing? That has not been announced <laughs> yet. It's gonna be Jaguars Dolphins, then Jaguars. Houston. That is something that's going to appeal. I don't see it. I don't see it. The whole thing with just shoving 
the NFL product in Europe has been tried so many times and failed. Like I told you about NFL Europe, which you didn't even know yep. existed. Yep. And did you, I don't know if you've looked at it since. Epic failure. It's just not something that can sustain itself over there without the big names. And you go and just putting a team over there. What if? is a gigantic disadvantage to be the team that is there. What if? This is completely out of the realm, crazy idea, but it would be the only way to make this work. We build a bridge. No. Right. No. What if you put a six-team league over there, but they're in the NFL draft, and they can participate in NFL free agency? No expansion. Fuck the expansion draft. I hate expansion drafts. So now you have to fight with the other countries. Wit, what currency are they going to be paid in? And how are Ooh. they going to be taxed? Ooh, that is, wow. The NBA tried that when they first had Toronto and uh, the other team that was on the West, the other Canadian team that got it defunct, turned into Memphis Grizzlies. Oh, uh, Vancouver. Vancouver Grizzlies. They, because the, the taxes in uh, Canada for somebody who makes that much money is like 49%. Yep. So they like they tried to circumvent it by saying, "Well, we'll pay you out of the NBA office. You, you work for us. You just happen to play." And the candidate said, nah, 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 nah. "So if you play for the Toronto Raptors, you are getting taxed a crap load. So how are these teams going to get paid? Which currency are they going to get paid? You're going to put up a team in in Germany. You're going to put a team in in uh, Barcelona. They don't all s pay by the euro." And their tax, the way they do taxes is totally different in all those countries, especially in the UK. And they don't even know what they're doing with Brexit. So bad idea. Bad idea. It's just not going to work. That was a uh, angle of this that I never even thought about. I'm kind of impressed. See that? I was because just I'm old. Yeah, the only way I was talking about it was a way to make it work where they're still getting the talent over there. So they get their own entire league, six teams. They have a playoff and a championship all just done in European. However, they can participate in our free agency. They can participate in all of our draft, everything. Okay. And their record gets put in the same place where they would normally be in the draft. And the Super Bowl is their no. championship. No. They have, no, they have their own champion. We so, have our own champion. So it's six additional teams? Yes. Or you're taking six teams? Six additional teams. So we're looking at 36 so teams. So now you're watering, well, down, you know, watering down the product. The only sp major sport that can handle it is the NFL. NBA could handle it. No, nope, they don't have enough superstars. There's a lot of talent overseas no. that people will pay to see. Nope. You can go to Israel right now, and you wouldn't heard of anybody out there. And they they're crap. Pack. They pack. It's not about the good they are. It's putting asses in the seats. Can you put asses in the seats? They don't care if they're good or not. Why do they care if there's talent there? Because they want asses in the seats. If you already got people going to the games, you don't need to send them LeBron James. Because you already got people in the games. You can send them... James, the guy who cuts my lawn, you don't have to send LeBron James. The only position in the NFL that would be an issue to add six additional teams is the quarterback. However, the XFL has the chance to prove that wrong. Yeah, I, I wish the XFL success, but I don't know. It didn't work last time. I think they pulled the plug too early. I think we agreed with that. Yep. I think they plugged the, pulled the plug way too early. There's a lot of different things going on with the XFL. It's not going to be anything like it's – like, look up their rules. I think it's going to be an entertaining product, and I'm really excited to watch it. It's on perfect time of year. I mean, at least people around here, I don't think they give two craps about the Red Sox right now. Maybe in July if they're like 500 – They'd be interested in the play, in the uh, trade deadline, but it's going to be it's played in an interesting time of year where there's really nothing going on. Which you want to watch golf? We got ten weeks of XFL coming up. So, by the way, shameless plug: check out the Game Changer Sports Network. We we will have a representative in Seattle talk interference sports. We'll be taking Seattle, and we'll have Jim a representative Gord. in Houston for the XFL games. 
this weekend and Jim the rest Zorn of the season. Is the, is the yes, yes, he is. Jim Zorn. It's nice to see him coaching him. again. I remember watching him play. He, I liked him. Seattle was a fun. We got to see Seattle, like I said before, a couple shows ago. When you're growing up in this area and the Patriots were awful, you could only watch them on TV if it was an away game. But the 4 o'clock game was always on, and Seattle was on a lot. And um, got to watch Seattle a lot. Jim Zorn um, was another guy. Uh, he turned to Steve Largent. Uh, it was it was fun. It was they were a fun team to watch back in the day. Good to see Jim Zorn getting back into football. Yes, nice. All right, so yeah, that's all I have. Relatively short episode. I mean, just Super Bowl recap kind of stuff and right, a right, couple right. of other things that have come out. So uh, next week, um, possible. But it might have possible. It might be a family issue that I have to deal uh, with. How long um, until I'm going to be on vacation? One of these weeks. Yeah, it's still a month away. The draft is April. April. So we got free agency in the on the 15th of uh, March starting. Right. So we'll have to we'll actually let you know when we'll be back. It might be on a tiny yeah. hiatus. Yeah. Uh, if something big happens, we'll come. You know. You know. We might we might be back next week. We might not. We don't know. Could be. We might be back the week after. We we'll might you know. put together a show for you guys. We might have fun. We might just yell at each other. You might find a replacement that's not 50 years old. I might find a replacement that's not 50 years old. <laughs> We're going to get the old man stories if you replace me. <laughs> I have to go sit where Russ is sitting. Hey, you know, you can still give your stories back I have there. to go sit over there with a camera <laughs> and say, I have, a, I have something to say. All we right, got guys. We got Talk Interference Sports uh, Tuesday nights. We got Circus Monkey Sports, both on the Game Changer Sports Network. Check out our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever else you decide to do. Check out our website. Check out our articles. You know, show us love. Show us support. Comment, like, share. We love you. Have a great night, guys.